this volume of basic carburetors and fuel systems. In this volume, we're going to be discussing Johnson & Evinrude's single barrel Type 4 carburetor. This carburetor was used on Johnson & Evinrude engines all the way from the mid uh, 196, uh, 1975 all the way up to about 1984 and even beyond with a few uh, minor changes to the, the basic platform of the carburetor itself. Now, there's two different types of Type 4 carburetors. One, which is the one I have in my hand here, which uses the adjustable low speed jet with a fixed high speed orifice and the other carburetor that we're going to be working on is the one that has the three fixed orifices which is your low speed orifice, your intermediate orifice and your high speed orifice. Now these are non adjustable versus the earlier carburetor which is the adjustable type. Now that's really the only two difference in the two carburetors is that one has the adjustable low speed jet and the other one does not. One more thing I'd like to point out before we get started is that whenever you're working on a project like this always be sure to keep your parts in a small container because these carburetors contain many many parts, little ball bearings and things like that and springs which could become lost and some of these parts are not available in your carburetor kit. Should you lose these parts you may end up having to replace your whole carburetor because you may not be able to get some of these parts. Now just Keep in mind that when you're doing your project, if you may not remember where something goes, write it down so that when you go to put your project back together later on, you can take out your, your diagram and just take a look and it'll refresh your memory on where some of these, where some of these parts might go. These parts are re uh, readily available, the carburetor kits are readily available at many of your um, marine jobbers. There's, there's many aftermarket marine dealers now, so that's you know just one one place where you can purchase all your carburetor kits. They're they're fairly easy to uh, to obtain. So let's go ahead and we'll get started with breaking down our first carburetor, which is going to be the uh, one with the adjustable orifice, the adjustable low speed jet, and then we'll go ahead and we'll go on to our other one. Just bear in mind the only difference is going to be the fact that it has a low speed a low speed adjustment. So we'll go ahead and we'll start breaking down the carburetor, getting it cleaned out, go through the carburetor kit and put it back together and get it ready to put back on our outboard. All right, let's start with breaking down our carburetor here and what we're going to do to begin breaking it down is remove our fuel bowl plug which also will allow us access to our high speed jet. So we're going to go ahead and remove it get it off the carburetor. One thing I'd like to also bring up is that as you're working on your project, like this has got a little fiber washer on it, if you can see right there, and it's always a good idea maybe to leave some of these parts on here because you're going to have many, many little washers. So if you leave this part on here, this little washer, when you take that one out of your carburetor kit, it'll help you remember where it went. So just leave that washer on there. It'll be, make it a lot easier when you go ahead and you, you start assembling your carburetor. We'll go ahead and remove our low speed orifice here, our low speed plug, which will allow us access to the low speed jet. And this will also have a little gasket on it. You need to remove all these plugs so that when you put your carburetor in the cleaning fluid, what it's going to do is it's going to let the fluid, the carburetor cleaning solution, get in there and, and get into all these pores and clean them out. Inside here, you're going to have a little O-ring. We need to remove that because you're going to need to replace it. Just take that little O-ring right out and put that in your container. Okay. Now what we're going to do now is remove the bottom of our carburetor. There's four screws that hold the carburetor bowl on, and this will allow us access to our float and needle valve, which we're going to have to remove. <coughs> These are not too bad of a carburetor. They don't have that many parts. They're a simple carburetor to rebuild. There's many parts you don't have to remove on this one. There's four screws that hold the, the base on get this base off here real quickly and another thing you need to do also is that if you're working on a two or three barrel uh, if you're working on an engine that has two or three carburetors it's a it's a good idea to take 
when you're working on them and mark the carburetor and the base. Like if you have a, a two-cylinder engine, mark the carburetor with a number one. Just, just scratch on the aluminum, number one. And scratch on the base, number two. And right along, number two cylinder, mark that as number two carburetor and number two base. Because some of these bases have the fuel inlets on the base and you'll have to make sure that this base goes on the correct carburetor when, you, when you're reassembling it. So that's always a good thing to do is to make sure you mark your bases so you know which base goes with which carburetor. All right, let's go ahead and remove our, our base. If they, if they come off hard, just take your screwdriver and, and just very carefully pry them up and we'll see what we have, okay? Now by looking inside this, this base, we can see in here that we do have a lot of dirt and varnish deposits. It's not that bad, but we do have quite a bit of dirt and, and, and varnish here in the bottom of the, of the bowl. Okay, let's go ahead and remove our float and needle valve, which would be very easily done just by taking our tip cleaner, which is what we use to clean out our, our jets, and just take this tip cleaner and push out our little pin that holds our float in and go ahead and remove the float and that will allow you to see your needle valve we want to remove that needle valve that's going to be replaced and then next what we want to do is remove our needle seat and this usually comes out without too much difficulty we'll take it out make sure that we get our little nylon washer that's on there make sure that like I said, keep it on there so you remember where the other nylon washer goes. So just leave that nylon washer right on there. All right, let's remove our gasket. Pull our gasket off. Now we're going to throw this away because this gasket is going to come in our carburetor kit. But for just for reasons of who knows what, but just for reasons of you know, matching the matching the gaskets up to make sure you have the right carburetor, uh, the correct carburetor kit. Keep this until you're done with your project. Now, the only other thing we got to replace, and this is very important to re to take off, remove, and replace, is this center nozzle gasket. This is your high speed nozzle right here. It is very important that you remove this and replace the one, replace it with a new one because what this does is this seals, this gasket here, seals between your high speed jet and the base of your carburetor and it entraps your low speed nozzle in here. If, if you do not have a good seal here, even though you rebuild your carburetor and you don't replace this gasket, you may have problems with high speed operation because this gasket is not sealing correctly. It has to suck the fuel from down in here in the carburetor and up through the high speed nozzle when you open the throttle up. So it's very important to remember to replace this gasket. We'll remove it. Now, like I've discussed in some of our other videos, some of your high speed nozzles are removable. However, they are made out of very thin brass. And if they're in tight, which most of them are, it's best and I strongly suggest that you leave them in the carburetor because they can be clean. It's a big tube and you can very simply take your cleaning, your welder's cleaning uh, tip cleaner and just run them in there and clean out and, and get any deposits out of there before you put it in your carburetor cleaner. The same thing with the middle tube. Find the proper size for your, your tip cleaner. Run it in the center tube clean out, you know, that way anything that's in there will get cleaned out before you put it in your cleaning solution. Now, if we take a quick look at our carburetor, we can see that's broke down. These parts you're going to leave on. There's no, no need to take them off. We can see that our carburetor is all broke down. There's nothing else to remove. We can also see that our bowl is all broke down. There's nothing else to remove. One thing we want to do before we put our bowl in our carburetor cleaner is to take our tip cleaner and run it through our high speed jet. And if you look down inside where your high speed nozzle goes, 
you'll be able to see the tip cleaner. And just clean that out so that, like I said, as you put in your cleaning solution, your carburetor cleaner, it will speed up the process of cleaning out the carburetor. Now, we'll set this aside for just a moment. Okay, before we go ahead and we clean our, our carburetor out and put our carburetor cleaner, there's one thing I want to show you. I want to show you how to take off the needle valve on the other type, the earlier model carburetor. Now, like I was saying, the only difference in the two carburetors is the fact that one carburetor has a fixed low speed adjustment and the other carburetor, this one here, has a, an adjustable low speed adjustment. And the only thing you have to do if you should have one of these carburetors is just to go ahead and remove your needle valve. That's all you have to do. It's the only extra step there is, is to remove that needle valve. And you can see, and one thing you want to be very careful of this needle valve is this fine point on the end. You cannot damage this. This is what controls the idling of your engine. So you don't want to damage that. Put that to be clean. And the only other thing we need to do is remove our nylon washer that's right in here. Now this washer helps seal the needle valve and you're going to need to replace that. So we're just going to have to go ahead and remove that. Now that's basically all there is. You might want to stick your tip cleaner in there and, and pass it through the low speed jet making sure it's cleaned out. So that's the only difference between the two basic carburetors. If you remember on our other carburetor that we, that we did just a little while ago, you can see that, that they are basically the same except for one of them had this low speed jet. So let's go ahead and get our carburetor into the carburetor clean uh, solution and get it cleaned out. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to take pressurized air and we're going to blow out all of our ports and all of our low speed holes and our jets where our jet plugs go we're going to blow out all these areas with air before we reassemble our carburetor Now that we've removed our carburetor out of our carburetor cleaner, what we're going to do next is um, reassemble our carburetor, put our new gaskets in there. One thing you want to make sure that you do after you take your carburetor out of your carburetor cleaner is take some compressed air and a, and a, and a blow nozzle and blow out all these passages. Blow out your high speed nozzle, your low speed jet, and take your base and make sure you, you blow out all these access ports where any gas or air may flow through. Make sure you have any dirt out of there that may, may be trapped in there from, from being in the carburetor cleaner. Okay, we're going to start by putting in our needle valve and our seat. So we'll take our needle valve and our seat. It comes in a little package and open it up. And being careful because something I want to show you here is a, as you open this up, the first thing I like to do is there's a little spring that's in this package. I like to put that first thing, I like to put that right on my needle valve. That way I don't lose that spring. And what that what purpose that spring serves is that it hooks to the float. And what it does is it allows the, the float to pull the needle valve down out of the seat. So should there be a situation where the needle valve may be sticking as the float as a, as the engine uses fuel and it drops down, it will pull the steel valve off the seat. Okay, let's take and put our little fiber washer onto our needle seat, install it in our carburetor, being very careful as we start to thread the seat down into the aluminum base, not to strip it. Make sure that the threads are aligned properly. Go ahead and bring that on down and snug it up. Whenever you're working with aluminum and brass, always be careful where possible Try to finger start your parts and always be careful not to cross thread. Now next thing we're going to do is put our needle valve onto our float and guide it down into our needle seat. This carburetor kit comes with a new pin. 
We're going to go ahead, some of them don't come with these pins, but we're going to have it go ahead and replace that pin. And not only, that's going to serve as another purpose too. That's not an original equipment pin. And if you ever have to rebuild this carburetor or somebody else may have to rebuild it, what that's going to tell them is it's going to tell them that this carburetor has been rebuilt before. All right. Next thing we're going to do now is adjust our carburetor height, float height, and, and drop level. The height, the float height is the distance that the float will allow fuel up into the carburetor. If you can take a look at this carburetor, what you want to look at is you want to look at the platform of the carburetor. You can see that this float is dropped down in there. This float wants to be so that it looks just like So, in other words, if you can see the space underneath this carburetor, you want to have an even amount of space between the float and the base. And that would be the proper float height. The drop level is when you turn the carburetor over, and that's the amount of drop that the float drops into the bowl. This is the amount of drop that will drop to allow fuel to come into the carburetor. Now, the correct height for the float drop, just by simply taking some kind of a measuring device, we want to have the distance between the base of the carburetor and the platform of the float wants to be from an inch and an eighth to an inch and five eighths. Anywhere between an inch and an eighth to an inch and five eighths is acceptable. I usually like to run mine when I adjust my float height at an inch and a half. We can see that, uh, that the float drop on this is almost an inch and a half, and that's where I like to set mine. Now we want to turn the carburetor over and we want to adjust this drop, the float height level which we which we seen was wrong and all we're going to do by doing that is to hold our finger firmly on the top of the float but we want to lift it up off the needle seat a little bit we don't want to hurt the the needle the needle valve itself so just lift it up a little bit and hold it hold that platform and then just bend up carefully the float and then drop it down and then check it and as we can see we can see it still needs to be adjusted some more so all we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to hold on to that and we're just going to bend that up some and check it again. And as we can see, we're getting pretty close, getting real close. We're going to adjust it one more time. I'm going to bring it back down just a little bit. You want to make sure that you're not applying pressure to the needle valve itself because you're going to damage it. And that looks like that's going to be just about right. We can see we have a, a, almost a, a perfectly, perfectly um, level float from our platform to the base of our float. Now that's all the adjustments we have to do as far as adjusting our, our float height and our float. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put on our nozzle gasket. Remember that was the one I told you was very important. We need to slide that down over our high-speed nozzle. Sometimes you just have to take a couple screwdrivers and just easily push it down in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our new bowl gasket and compare them. Make sure to take our old one and compare them. Make sure that they look the same. We can see they all look the, they look the same. Replace it. Now it only goes one way. It only goes one way. You just pay close attention when you're putting it on. And put it on like so. And the next thing we have to do is we'll go ahead next and we'll put our bowl on. Now, our fuel bowl is made of aluminum. If you take a look, the side of the boss on these screw hose is not very, there's not much metal there. So when you put your screws down in, it's, you know, tighten them down, but don't over tighten them because you can crack this, this side of these, these carvers very easily. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our fuel bowl cover on. We'll get out our four screws and put them in. And I like to tighten them up and, and kind of go crossways like you were, you were torquing down a head or something like that. And just go ahead and we'll bring down 
this one, and I'll go over here to this one here on the back of the carburetor. It's aluminum, aluminum will warp. You know, you're not going to really be tightening this down that much, but it, it's just a good practice to stay and do this type of thing. Go ahead and bring the four screws down, and then just snug them up, tight enough so the gasket will not leak, but not too tight. Remembering that we're working with brass and aluminum. All right, now the next thing we have to do now is we're going to take out our high-speed cap, Throw away our old gasket, our old fiber gasket, go into our kit, take out our new one, install it onto our, onto our, our plug, like so, and then we're going to go ahead and start it. Like I said, remember to finger, start with your fingers. This is so easy, you'll be able to bring this all down right with your fingers anyways. And then just take your 7 16 wrench, and then just carefully just snug it up, not to overdo it. The only other thing we have to do now on this particular carburetor is replace our, our low speed uh, orifice screw. Now this particular one we took off had a fiber washer. This particular one has an O-ring. So we're going to go ahead and just slide this rubber O-ring down on this screw all the way down just like so. And go ahead and we'll start it in to the carburetor like so. Take our screwdriver and we'll go ahead and we'll bring it up and snug it up. Just like that. Just snug her down. And that's all there is to it. Uh, we're the, only other, the only other part you're going to need is you're going to need your, your gasket to put your carburetor back on your engine. And that's basically it for for this carburetor, now let's take a quick look at our other carburetor that has our low speed adjustment, and we're going to show you what you need to do to put the low speed adjustment back into the low speed adjustment screw back in your carburetor. That way, if you should have that carburetor, you can follow that easy, them easy steps right there and get your needle valve back in. Okay, now we're going to show you real quickly uh, what you need to do to put your needle valve in your other carburetor, your, your other type carburetor, the earlier carburetor that you may have. And that's basically very simple. It, it's um, all you have to do is take and install your nylon bushing into the carburetor, like so. Take your needle valve and screw it in and bring it down. You may be able to do it with your fingers. In most cases, you might have to use a screwdriver. At any rate, whether you're using a screwdriver or your fingers, just make sure when it comes down to the seated position that you just snug it up. Do not tighten this needle valve into. Just snug it up to where she comes down, and you can just barely feel it snug up to the bottom right there. If you keep on tightening that needle valve, just because there's threads here doesn't mean they need to go all the way in. You're probably going to have about a quarter of an inch of threads exposed after you install this needle valve. From the seated position, back your needle valve out from one and a quarter to one and a half turns. There's one and there's a half. I like one and a half because under most conditions the engine is going to start and run at one and a half. It may be a little rich, but then after you have your outboard engine started, you can always go ahead and adjust it. But someplace between one and a half and one and a quarter, your engine is going to perform correctly. And that's all the difference there is between the two carburetors. And, and you just got to remember, when you're seating your needle valve, do not over tighten it. When it comes up to where it seats, that's as far as it goes. Do not keep going in because you're going to ruin it. Okay, as we've seen, the Johnson Evinrude single barrel carburetor basically is a very simple carburetor to rebuild. There's a few things I'd like to point out to, to help in the, in ease the process of rebuilding your carburetor. One thing is to get yourself a, a welder's tip cleaner or something similar to clean out some of the jets in your carburetor. Now, you should not have to remove your high speed and low speed jets in your carburetor. 
And if you, if you find that you don't have to, just take your tip cleaner, find the right size and insert it in there and just pass it through and make sure that, you, that it's open so that when you put it in your carburetor cleaner, it will speed up the process of the carburetor cleaning solution eating away the varnish. Is how, how long do you leave a, a part in the carburetor cleaner? That really basically is going to be your determination because as a, as a carburetor sits longer, it builds up more varnish and more oxidation on the aluminum. And some carburetors you may have to let sit overnight or for a 24-hour period. Other carburetors, they may have to only sit in the cleaning solution for an hour. So that's basically going to be your judgment. But when you take your carburetor parts out, inspect them really close. Make sure that before and after you blow them out that they're good and clean. And by inspecting them really close, that ought to be, that ought to tell you, you know, whether the, the carburetor is, is thoroughly cleaned out good or, or not. Uh, we want to show you real quick a piston. This piston right here, take a look at this piston. And what we can see is that the piston has a lot of score marks on it and it has uh, the rings are seated right into the piston lands. And what has happened is that the, the carburetor that was related to this piston had leaned itself out, making this piston run dry in the cylinder. Now, the owner should have known he had a problem with his outboard engine because this would have, this would have showed up very easily when, you know, when he started his engine up and uh, and, and accelerated the boat. When you accelerate the boat with this kind of a problem, what's going to happen is your boat's going to, first of all, it, it may stall out. Secondly, it may, you may have to bump the choke a few times to get the plane out. And if you have, you know, once in a while, that's okay because, you know, it might be just a cold running engine. But if you have to do it every time, what's happening is that the fuel, when you open the throttle up, is not getting to one of the cylinders. And another problem is, is that when you open the throttle up, the engine might have stalled. If you, if you get on the lake and you let your engine warm up, it'll probably idle fine. It'll, it'll probably idle fine. There won't be any indication that there's anything wrong until you give it gas. When you give that engine gas, if that, if that engine dies or cuts out, then you've got a high speed problem with your engine. You've got a carburetor that is not given the sufficient amount of fuel to a certain cylinder. And you need to make sure that you get it checked out as soon as possible and do not run that motor because what's going to happen is you're going to have premature piston damage like this customer did right here. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you find it very informative and I hope that it will better help you understand your outboard engine.